Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to be talking about using time current characteristics for electrical calculations. The time current characteristics for protective devices are shown in Appendix 3 of the wiring regulations. For protective devices that are not included in the wiring regulations, the information can be obtained from a manufacturer. For the purpose of this video, I've created some sample logarithm charts using my laptop and plotted a time curve using the values for the minimum current required to operate the protective device within the disconnection time. So the reason that I'm showing you examples that I've created rather than showing you the actual charts in the wiring regulations is because the contents of the wiring regulations are copyrighted. So the examples that I'm about to show you are for demonstration purposes only, but in real life you would use either the time curve charts from the wiring regulations or the information provided by the manufacturer. So here we have the first example, which is a log chart that I created using Microsoft Excel. A logarithmic chart is a way of condensing the data so that it's possible to fit it all onto one page. In the time current characteristics, we have the current in amps on the horizontal axis across the bottom of the screen, and the time in seconds on the vertical axis on the left hand side. This example is for a fuse, and you'll notice that the charts for fuses have a steady curve, and for circuit breakers, the curve finishes with a vertical straight line, which is where instantaneous tripping occurs, which happens when the rating of the breaker is exceeded by a certain number of times, which depends on the type of breaker. But in these examples, I've used the values for fuses, in this case, a BS88-3 fuse. In the charts in the regs book, you'll notice that there is a table on the top right hand corner of the page. The table provides the minimum current required to operate the protective device within the disconnection times. And I have used the same values to plot the curve on this chart. So here we have the values for 0.1, 0.2, 0.4, 1 and 5 seconds. On this next chart I have used the values for a BS88-2 fuse. So if we know the fault current we can plot the current on the chart, draw a line up to where it meets the curve and then across to find the time that it will take for the fault current to operate the protective device. So there are a few ways in which we can use the charts. Firstly, we can use the charts to calculate the maximum ZS for a protective device by taking the minimum current required to meet the disconnection time, IA, and using the formula from Appendix 3. This is useful if using a protective device that isn't listed in the wiring regulations, such as an MCCB and the max ZS is not listed in table 41. I talk about maximum ZS in another video on my channel and I'll put a link at the end of this video. The second thing is the adiabatic equation. To carry out the adiabatic equation, we need to know the current and the time it will take to operate the protective device. So in the first equation, T equals K squared multiplied by S squared divided by I squared is for the thermal withstand of the line conductor. And what we are looking for is for the time in seconds to be greater than the time that the short circuit current would cause the protective device to operate, which we can confirm by plotting the currents on the time current characteristics. In the second equation, S equals the square root of I squared multiplied by T divided by K is for the minimum size CPC. So we plot the fault current on the time current characteristics to find the time and then we can carry out the equation. One thing to bear in mind though is that the time current characteristics stop at 0.1 seconds, which is instantaneous. However, in most cases, the fault current will be greater than the minimum required to meet the disconnection time. This is good from the point of view that it will operate the device within the disconnection time. However, it's also necessary to ensure that the conductor is capable of withstanding the actual fault current, even for that 0.1 of a second. You'll notice that in the curve charts in the regs book for circuit breakers, there is a note that says that where the fault current is greater than that required to trip the device in 0.1 seconds, we can request the energy let through data from the manufacturer, which we can then use to carry out the equation. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more electrical calculation guides.